cool. We are live. All right. Welcome back. So this week we have another great topic. This one I'm really excited about because it's probably to up there with the number one um, questions I get when people call me about their dogs is how to stop your puppy from biting or nipping, whatever it may be. Your puppy is being a nuisance and doing all the biting and nipping, whether they're chasing the kids around, biting at their ankles. I get that a lot. Um, jumping up at your um, sleeves on your clothes or your pants legs that type of nipping when you go to pet your puppy they're like this that type of nipping so it almost sounds like any interaction you're having with your dog to try to engage with them they're nipping so whatever it may be for you whether it's the nipping at the clothes pants your puppy's nipping and you want them to stop right so that's what we're going to talk about today how was archie when he was a puppy was he like a big nipper yeah he's a terror so basically Ooh. i have like sweaters with holes in them uh, yeah we, yep. uh, he would be the type that would, I think for, he had this, like, this very short phase where he would nip at the back of your heels mm -hmm. and like, you just had to like hide in the bathroom sometimes cause he would just be <laughs> nipping and everything. And so, yep. 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 so some of his puppyhood was very challenging. I will say the nipping was very tough. So he was, he was very, yeah. uh, active in that realm, I would say. Yeah. All right. Yep. And so, like Scott said, when earlier on, it could be they could be little terrorists and like a nuisance. But let's talk about getting you through it. So first thing first, the good thing to know about nipping and biting with puppies is that it's normal. This is normal puppy behavior. And we're going to get through this together. There is a solution for this. So it is normal. And so ideally, when a puppy is nipping and biting and stuff, it could be due to a few things. And so I want to run that by you. Just so while I'm going through this list, you can kind of figure out, you know, why your puppy is nipping. And so first things first, puppies nip because um, they have something we call, which you want to work on, which ideally the mom of the dog works on a dog with is something called bite inhibition. And that's just a fancy word for teaching your dog what's appropriate bite strength and what's not. Ideally, when a puppy's with their mom earlier on, um, when they start to do all that type of biting and stuff, the mom will redirect them and let them know what's appropriate and what's not. But we're not the mom. If you're not a trainer, you wouldn't know this. So you get your puppy and all of a sudden they're not with their mom anymore. So their mom's not teaching them. So all they know is to, okay to keep on biting. So that's um, primarily the reason why puppies bite is because their mom's not there anymore to kind of redirect them. Also, um, um, puppies may get a little bit nippy too because they're trying to get your attention in some way or form. So that's another reason they may um, be a little bit nippy. And also um, when we, they do get nippy with us and we start to do all this, like get away with stuff, it almost turns into a fun play time for them. And for them, that's reinforcing to them. So they end up nipping even more. If they know, hey, if I go do this, that I get that reaction, then they tend to have a tendency to continue doing it. And one of the big reasons I've noticed in and, you know, training so many puppies and stuff is your dog's daily schedule is primarily could be up there with the top number one reason why your dog is free and pretty much nippy. If you notice, like when your kids are tired, they just get crazy. They start crying. They start, you know, just acting wild, right? Dogs are no different when puppies, they're babies. They're, 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 pretty much baby. So when they're up at like, say five o'clock in the morning with you and say, you don't go to bed till 11 o'clock at night, that's a long time for a puppy to be up getting into stuff in just trouble. So they do need some downtime to rest. And that will cut out on a lot of the craziness with the nipping and stuff like that, because they're not like overly exhausted. And that's where a lot of the nipping comes in from too. So I encourage you to take a look at your puppy's um, schedule for the day, starting from the time they wake up to the time they go to bed and make sure they're getting enough rest and downtime. Rest and downtime doesn't mean that you see a puppy over there laying down on the floor. Like you want it to be structured. So if you're working from home, which a lot of folks are doing now, um, the rule of thumb is for every one hour that your puppy is outside playing, doing whatever, the crate, um, or not sleeping, they should spend two hours relaxing, believe it or not. So they do need uh, almost about 12 hours of sleep puppies need. And if they don't get that much sleep, in addition to them not knowing the proper bite levels, them being overexhausted, what do you get? A nippy puppy. And then a lot of the... Um, puppy nipping comes from too. You have to watch a puppy too, especially um, I get a lot of this with the kids in play. So just assume if you're not watching your kids and puppy um, 
interacting and redirecting your puppy and your kids too when they're doing stuff they're not supposed to be doing you could assume that nipping is going to take place and so you have to take it further and there's two different types of managing your kids when it comes down to plant you know nipping and stuff and making sure that's not going to happen so um one thing you can do to kind of decrease the nipping and when it comes to like interaction with your dog is you can try um if you're not going to be in a room putting them in like a gated or crated area it doesn't have to be long term but especially if you're working with kids and it and all that play stuff if you're going to be removed from the room and the kids are still there place your dog behind some type of barrier so that he's not engaging with the kids until you come back another great option is to use a tether tether your dog to a piece of furniture so they do have the option to move around but at the same time if you need to get away for any reason your dog's not chasing behind you nipping and the kids they're not chasing behind the kids when they're like ah the dog's nipping me you're like just calm down so you could tether them too that'll be you know that's going to work as well um so getting into the training part of nipping and how to decrease it because that's what everyone wants to know too but the main thing just really take it soak in what i just talked to you about because that's going to be key in addition to what i'm about to tell you of, of the training part so the training part in nipping you have to work like the dog's mom and redirect them but you also want to keep in mind at the bite level that your dog's nipping at so we have this handout that you know i give to my clients that you know are concerned about their dog's nipping and it has a bite level on it with five meaning like ouch like that really freaking hurt to like one like eh, it wasn't that bad because a lot of time when our dogs nip us we're like ow that hurts but we don't know whether it's getting worse with the nipping or getting better because we just say it ouch so what we do is we use that level as an indicator to um know whether our dog's getting better with not nipping as much so you're just not saying like oh my dog's nipping and it's not getting better so anytime your dog nips you just think about the level five and level one you want to put that on a level of whether it hurts really bad at a five or it's not too much at a one and you want to like literally take note of every single time your dog bites you and what he does which is supposed to say it's ouch like really loudly because it's like a startle effect and you redirect them with which you want them to nip on so whether that you give them a toy or a bone or something so what you're teaching them when you're saying ouch is like okay something's going on but i want you to do this instead so it's all about the redirecting so it does take a little bit to um for the uh to nip and to decrease and then alone let alone stop but also i want to keep uh, oh hi that forget about this another reason dogs may nip and it's good this is one of the main reasons why it does take a long time to decrease because you can get the schedule in order you can um you can give them the proper toys to chew and nip on but you have to remember puppies are teething and I always talk to my clients about this as well. You have to remember when dogs um, teeth are growing in, when our teeth are growing in, do you remember how irritating that was? Dogs can't say, hey, I need some Ambisol or my teeth are hurting. So what do they do? They start chewing and nipping on something to kind of soothe that, right? Yeah. And then I'll come back to my clients home. They're like, oh my God, nipping is great this week. Come back, nipping's, nipping's awful. But you have to remember for every set of teeth that grows in, it's like, okay, the dog's better with the nipping. And then the next set grows in, they're worse. Then the next set grows in, they're better. And so it's going to be a lot of yo-yoing up and down, but you have to stay the course with the schedule because you want to make sure you're doing your part and let the dog figure out its part as far as like working through the nipping. But until all those teeth are pretty much grown in, you may see an inc incline with nipping and a decrease in that. But just starting off with just the ouches and redirecting will get your dog to... Um, nip a lot less did you do any of that with archie or what did you do to kind of get him or you just kind of like yeah. i'll wait it out <laughs> <laughs> no no we did uh we did the ouching and the loud voice and that sort mm -hmm. of thing and then yep. for um for teething we actually did like the frozen towel so we put a yes. towel like a thin like um hand towel that we didn't really use anymore we wet mm -hmm. it down put or even like a hand towel but not or a face water face towel or whatever wet it up and then put it in the freezer and then let them chew on it. And that seems yep. to really help. Kind of like you're saying, there's nothing really that we can give them for soothing like we could like a baby, but um, mm -hmm. 
at the very least, ice helps out, kind of like a teething ring for our babies too, right? And Where that helps. Exactly. It's the same, same thing, mm -hmm. same idea, basically. Yep. So. And they actually do have the teething rings for dogs yeah. to soothe their nice. teeth. You can do that. Give them ice cubes to crunch on. You yeah. actually want to give them, whatever they're chewing on, you want to give them the same thing to simulate. So if they're chewing on, like, um, say, your bed sheets, you want to give them maybe like a plush toy. If they're yeah. chewing on, like, the edge of, like, the windowsill, you want to give them something more harder and wooden. So give them something that, you know, simulate... Because I know right now, Francesca, she's teething, but she loves, I don't know, it's very soothing. She takes one of our throw pills. At this point, we just let her have it because we know that's yeah. what she, so you can designate like certain household items and just like, hey, just have it and let them do that. Um, yeah. But that's a whole nother live. But um, she just sits there and like, like soothes. Like you can see okay. her eyes like rolling in the back of her head. Like, and you can yeah. tell um, we was giving her toys to redirect her, but it wasn't working. And so I had to really sit down and think like, what is she? And so I looked, I'm like, okay, well, what I noticed was, yes, yeah, she's chewing on things, but with the pillow, she can get everything into the whole mouth, even right. back here. And that yeah. was even, so that was the trick. Yeah. And so even though you're giving your dog toys, you have to look at where they're biting at. Are they biting at the back of their mouth on the front yeah. and try to take that into consideration. If you feel like you like, Oh my God, I'm giving them toys and it's still not working. You know? Um, also um, last thing to uh, what was I was, I'm going to forget. I'll remember and I'll drop it in the comments, but um Oh, so if you notice that you do say you, you give them the toys or you're redirecting them and say they're still like nipping, you can give them a timeout because also that signals to me that they may be overstimulated, just yeah. to either too excited or too tired. So just, you know, put them in their crate, put them in some type of confinement area, gated area, let them kind of settle down and then bring them back out again. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that should do a world of a <laughs> uh, good for um, them to stop nipping. But um, hopefully you've gained some good tips to get your dog to stop nipping and get them on a path to, you know, nipping less. Just remember, if you have a puppy, it does take some time. Stay the course. Um, be consistent. Um, just know if you can't do like redirect, just put them in confinement until they kind of settle down. But I, you know, if you follow these tips and stay the course, you will see the decrease in nipping with your dog. Um, mm -hmm. So before we go, Scott, do you have anything to piggyback off of? Just jumping <laughs> off of that. I know thinking back to my own, uh, the puppyhood with Archie, like uh, all those things that Pam said, stay consistent. And it feels like the, it's the hardest time of owning and having, your, having your dog. But if you can get through that, then it's a breeze afterwards. So mm -hmm. there is light at the end of the tunnel. You just got to get to there. So. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see it. As soon as you leave this yeah. live and you start some things, you will see a small shift. Even if you start one of these things, you'll see a difference. Trust me. For sure. Yep. For sure. But otherwise, yeah, like go check us out. Uh, if you don't have time to always watch the lives, you can listen to all of them. Uh, we upload them every week as we put out a new one on, on our podcast. So Spotify, Apple, um, Stitcher, Google, all those good places. Just search down for pause. You'll find the podcast. Love it if you can leave a review, like, the fo yep. follow, all those good things. And, uh, yeah, that's all we got for today. All um, right. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll see you next week for another great live. <laughs> Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye. Bye.